Kubernetes ecosystem is one of the most, if not the most extensive we've ever seen. There are tools for everything, including observability. We can collect metrics, logs, and traces for almost anything. We can query them and we can see them in dashboards. There are hundreds of solutions for that alone. Yet, sometimes I miss simplicity of tools I would normally use in Linux. Sometimes I crave for single commands similar to those I would use when trying to figure out what's going on in a single server. Sometimes I miss something similar to, let's say, netstat that provides statistics about all active connections. Or let's say PS that outputs all active processes. In other words, sometimes I miss the ability to inspect what's going on in a cluster without going into tools like Prometheus, Grafana, Loki, and others. I miss the simplicity of micro CLI commands. Now, to be clear, I can do a lot, really a lot, with kubectl alone. I can list all the pods or any other types of resources. I can see events, I can see logs and many other things. However, they are at a higher level than, for example, PS that lists processes. Now, to be clear, that's understandable since kubectl knows what Kubernetes API knows and that's great. But if I would like to dive deeper and see what's happening at lower levels, I would need to enter into one of those nodes and start digging in. That's a bad idea for many reasons. To begin with, there can be many nodes in a cluster and I have no intention going through each of them separately. As a matter of fact, I often do not even have SSH access to individual nodes. Why would I? So I'm in a difficult situation. I might need to see what's happening at the lower level at the kernel level, yet I do not want to or even cannot access nodes of a cluster, at least not directly. What I would need is to inject Kubernetes aware yet lower level processes into my cluster with the goal for them to give me the information that I normally cannot get through Kubernetes API. The only sensible direction to get there would be eBPF that allows us to safely inject processes into kernel. EBPF should be able to see which processes are running, what's moving through the network, which files are used, and so on and so forth. Now, to be clear, we already have tools that leverage EBPF for that purpose, but they're often exposing information through a web UI. That's great, most of the time, but as I already mentioned, sometimes I would like the simplicity of micro commands typically available in Linux itself. I want quick and dirty way to do in Kubernetes what I can do on Linux, yet I want that something to be Kubernetes aware. To make my quest even more difficult, I would like such tools to be available in one place instead of me having to hunt them down one by one. And I found such a tool and I must say that I'm embarrassed that I was not aware of it until recently. So let's take a look at it. The tool in question is Inspector Gadget, which can be used as a kubectl add-on. The first thing we should do is, well, deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster. This is nice. It's nice that a tool can be deployed with a single command when using a demo like this one. But when it comes to a serious usage, I would expect it to be able to output manifests so that I could store them in Git and synchronize them with Argo CD or Flux or whichever other GitOps tool you might be using. It could be also a Helm chart, and if you search for it in Artifact Hub, you will find it. So you might say, problem solved, right? Helm charts work with GitOps tools. That would be true. However, that Helm chart is not mentioned anywhere in the docs. It's not in the installation instructions, nor anywhere else. So I can only assume that the chart is a result of some witchcraft, or that the community does not care about it, or that they don't think anyone should use it. Otherwise, it would be mentioned at least once in the documentation, right? Anyways, let's move on and take a look at what we can do with the kubectl add-on. The commands are divided into categories like advice, audit, profile, and so on and so forth. For example, let's see what kind of tracing we can do with it. We can see that trace alone contains quite a few things like socket binding, uh, check for security capabilities, trace of DNS requests, and so on and so forth. 
I will not bore you by going through all of the gadgets we have at our disposal. Instead, we'll take a quick look at a few I selected. For example, we can ask Inspector Gadget to monitor network traffic in the ATM namespace and store the output in network.json file. From now on, and until we stop monitoring, Inspector Gadget will be collecting information about network traffic going in and out of services in that namespace. So let's generate some traffic. Normally I would monitor real traffic in production for a while. The more information we gather, the better. However, for the purpose of showing you how it works, a single request to the Pinger app will be enough. That app will forward the request to the Silly Demo app, so we'll have at least three services involved one from Ingress and two related to those apps. So here it goes. Next, I will stop monitoring uh, running in the background by killing the kubectl process. So far, all it did was to record traffic into network JSON file. We can take a look at it, but only to conclude that it's boring as hell and probably useless by itself. It's just endless list of requests going in and going out. The only way someone would be able to convince me to go through those would be by saying that my only alternative is the new Ghostbusters movie. Have you seen that one? If you haven't, don't, unless you're willing to pay for a therapist to help you with trauma it will imprint on you. The interesting part is that we can use that information as input to generate network policies. According to the traffic generated in that namespace, we might want to generate those two network policies. They might not be perfect and we might still need to modify them slightly. Still, no matter whether we use them as suggested by Inspector Gadget or make some changes, having the ability to generate policies based on real traffic is amazing, especially since defining policies is tedious and, let's face it, boring. Nobody likes defining policies, right? From now on, I would store those policies in Git or apply them directly if I would like to be fired from the company I work at. Don't do that. I mean, don't apply anything directly. Use, use GitHub, please, please, please. Another interesting feature is snapshot process, which in a way is equivalent to the PS command, except that it looks for processes inside containers wrapped in pods. Those are all the processes running, which in this case are processes inside containers of the A-team namespace, including sleep inside the container suspiciously called cow. That certainly does not look like a process that should be running, and if this would not be a demo, I would ban cow from my cluster. We can also execute top command, which just as in Linux, shows which processes use the most resources, except that this time we will limit those to eBPF. And there we go. Those are all eBPF apps running or processes actually running in the cluster. What else? Uh, yes, we can also take a look at top usage of files. So let me spin up a container that will download files. To do that, I can clone a repo that is big, that is big enough, right? Which one is big, sufficiently huge? Oh, Linux. Let's clone the whole source code of Linux inside the container. That will certainly result in decently heavy usage of the file system inside the cluster. Now, while the container is cloning the whole Linux inside the cluster, we can take a look at the top file inside the ATEAM namespace. There we go. We can see which process is writing to the file system, how many bytes are being written, and so on and so forth. Let's do one more. Let's uh, trace TCP requests. To do that, we'll first need to generate some traffic with, let's say, DDoSify, which I can use to generate load testing. This is completely unrelated to the subject at hand, and I'm using it only as a convenient way to generate some traffic. You might want to check it out, though. So, yeah, check it out. Check out DDoSify. It's a cool tool. Anyways, I will create a test with 10,000 iterations, choose to generate traffic from all continents, and run it. Imagine that's real traffic coming into one of the apps, in the cluster. Now, if I would like to trace all those requests, I can simply execute yet another inspector gadget command. And there we go. That's the traffic coming into services in the A-team namespace. So by now, you probably got the gist of what inspector gadget does. It is a set of commands added to kubectl. Those commands allow us to observe almost anything happening in the cluster. Since we are talking about eBPF, those are observations happening inside the kernel level, hence they're low level. Yet 
aware of Kubernetes itself. Inspector Gadget truly reminds me of commands I was using when working with Linux directly. It's similar to what I was doing before Kubernetes. It's something I was missing. I should also mention that all the information available through gadgets can be exposed as Prometheus metrics, so if you prefer having it there, there is that option as well. Another important note is that you might already be using Inspector Gadget without even knowing that you're using it. A few tools are using it internally, one of them being Cubescape. If you're using it, if you're using Cubescape, you might want to know that behind the scenes it uses Inspector Gadget for some of its features. So that's it. If you're looking for commands equivalent to PS, Top, Netstat and other similar yet indispensable commands when managing Linux, but adapted to Kubernetes, then Inspector Gadget might be just the right tool for you. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one, cheers.